Hello and welcome back to Evolve Models when we're continuing with part 3 of our TACOM King Tiger build. As we know this kit comprises of full interior and exterior so we've got lots to get on with. Most of the sub-assemblies are pretty straightforward and I'm not intending to go through all of them but we'll go through some of the big bits like the engine and transmission. Starting off with the transmission and some of those sub-assemblies. Once we've got the gearbox and transmission assembly built up we can get them ready for paint. As you can see, we've got some seam lines we need to take care of. A little bit of filler should sort these out. Most of them won't be visible, specifically on the top where the radio sits, but there are other bits we do need to take care of. Talking of the radio, that's next up on my list. Let's get it together. Here's a question for anybody out there. Does anybody know of some really good brooches or files, you know, that are really small that you can get into the tight gaps, for instance, in between suspension springs? They probably don't need to be more than 2 and 3 millimetres wide each, just so you can get into those tight areas. If you've got any ideas, drop me a message in the comments. Also, if you know of any good tools to remove seam lines, add that in the comments too. As well as this kit is going together, there's still loads of seam lines and filling that are going to be needed, and some of them are quite pronounced. So we've got the gearbox and transmission assembly all built up and the radio that's going to go on the top. Let's just do a bit of a dry fit and see how it all fits together. I know that Andy, over at Andy's Hobby HQ, had some problem with some of the fitments, specifically when there were tabs or some sort of pins that were supposed to locate. So far I've not seen any, but I'm a bit wary. I'll save you the anguish and torment of watching me making a million wheels, but we will stick this one together and see how it goes together. I need to get a bit of a wiggle on here, because we've got plenty of wheels to prepare. Ok so we've got the idle wheels all built up now, we're just going to do a bit of a test fit. I intend to keep all the wheels separate to the end so we can get it painted and weathered and they won't be in the way, but we need to give it a bit of a test fit first to make sure it's all looking groovy. As we can see the locating holes aren't completely circular so they're only going to go in one way. We're getting to the point now when we've got some small fiddly sub-assemblies. As I said, I'm not going to bore you with these, but here's the drive shaft. We need to get this together, and this will be painted at the same time as the transmission. We're in a stickier situation since Sticky the Stick Insect got stuck on a sticky bun. After some careful reflection of the work already completed, I had a look at the whole section here. I'm not really happy in the way the primer reds come out. If we look at some of these other pieces that I've already primed, I actually used a white primer underneath and the primer red that used for the interior looks far better. So I'm not really happy with the finish that we've got on the interior here. So what am I going to do? Well, I think the best method would be to go in with some white primer, cover over all this red and start again. I think the black primer I used originally was just too dark and that's made the red not come through as it should. At the end of the day, I want to make this kit the best it can be. As we know, I'm not the best model in the world and I'm still learning, and I'm going to put this down into a learning curve. But while we've got the primer out and we're spraying, we can get round to doing all these other parts as well. I took some time off camera to get some of these pieces ready and prepared. A few pieces with injected pin marks that needed tidying up and a bit of filler here and there. Some of the items we need to get ready are in here, so we've got the drive shaft here that runs through the centre of the tank. We've then got some panels that go either side of the engine in the rear of the vehicle. As we can see these had the injector pin marks on them which I needed to take care of with some filler. We then got the gearbox, transmission and the radio gear that sits on the top. Again I've done some sanding work on these and prepped them up ready for the paint. I'm not expecting these to be perfect straight off. I think once we've got some primer down on there we'll see any other little blemishes we need to take care of. But first of all we need to get a coat down to see what we've got. And then last but not least, we've got a million wheels to spray up. If there's anybody out there with a magical method of preparing wheels, again, let me know in the comments section. It could save me much, much time. 
Obviously, I spent much time painting some of the interior bits and they're going to get covered over now, but if it's not right, it's not right. As usual, I'm using the AK Primer Micro Filler, but this time I'm using white. I'm going to go over it normally with the airbrush and try and cover up all of this red. First of all, I'm going to go over it all with a light coat. Just dusting all over it so I can see what I've got. And then I'm going to start laying down thicker and thicker layers of primer and hopefully cover it all up. As we mentioned before, this is a warts and all channel. I'm not just going to show you a finished model and said it was dead easy. Modeling's a learning curve and here's one mistake hopefully I won't make again in the future. And after all that, here's what we're left with. Looking much better now and should take the red a bit better. I'm now going to razz through the rest of these parts and get them primed up. And now it's time for take two. Let's add the primer red and see if it looks any better. I'm using the same MRP German primer red for this. It must be said, it's far more challenging painting it when all the side panels are in place. In an ideal world, I would have liked to have taken the side panels out again, so I can get into all of the nooks and crannies. But, there we go. I was lucky enough to get myself over to IPMS Telford this weekend, and managed to pick up this new Tamiya Super Thin. I've not used it before, but I'm going to give it a go on this engine. I'm told that it dries really, really quickly, but it does smell to high heaven. Could almost do a whole video on building this engine, it's a proper sub-assembly all of its own. I think I've actually built kits that have less parts than just this engine itself. As with some of the other assemblies in this, there's some weird engineering decisions about the way these fit together, but we're going to work through them and see what we get at the end.
Off camera, I managed to add some of the pipe work. Unfortunately, the footage of this included mostly shots of my head, which I didn't think was very appealing. So here we go. And the final part for the engine build is to put the cover on here. Apologies for the long-winded video, but this thing was a build all of its own. I managed to do a quick test fit to make sure everything was lined up. The only thing you can see is one of the pipes on the outside of the engine may be fouling one of the inner walls, but we'll take care of that later. Now that the engine's all built up, we need to get it primed and ready and painted. I had a quick Google and a look around for pictures of this engine, and a lot of them seem to be painted in black, though there are other colours. I'm going to give the air cleaner a bit of a dust overcoat, but I'll probably end up going over this in a, uh, in a different colour. But while I've got the primer out, I'm just going to use this one. The actual engine itself. I've had a quick Google, and there are plenty, well, pictures of it around, but they all seem to be in different colours. As we know, pictures of the King Tiger, not many of them are in colour, so we can't really get a good idea of what uh, the engine's supposed to look like. Obviously, a lot of them have been refurbished and painted in different colours. I think I'm going to have a go with black first, but I did find one online that was in a green colour, a German green, and I think I may go with that one. Next up, we've got the air cleaner. This needs to be done in the cream colour, or cream-wise. Not to make the same mistake again, I'm going to go over it with white primer, and not black this time. It's time to spray the air cleaner in the German cream. The colour difference is pretty subtle and it doesn't really pick it up that well on camera but to the eye you can see the difference. Again I'm using my home brew of the MRP paint. Off camera I took some time to paint up the engine. Some of the paintwork needed painted in the uh, red primer colour and there were some aluminium parts that needed painting too. Again, I'm not too happy with this, but we may come back and visit this later. I did use the live colour paints to do the rusty exhaust. And overall, it looks okay, but I'm not 100% happy with this. The aluminium doesn't look particularly nice. I used the AK True Metal well, paint that comes in a tube and it's not come out amazing. I need to have a go with some of the weathering to see if it would liven it up a bit. I started doing some of the weathering and again it's not looking amazing. The exhaust look okay but it's not what I want. I could either be satisfied with it knowing that it's going to be stuck in the heart of the engine bay and probably never going to be seen or I can respray with primer and give it another go. I think in hindsight I want to give it another go so it's going back in the spray booth. And here we are again. The engine's been reprimed now and it's looking okay. I did see some images online of one of these painted in nice green. So I've dug into the paint stash and managed to find this German green here. I'm going to give this a go. Right, it's back from spraying now. I think it's looking well, more agricultural anyway. Leave your comments down below. Tell me if you think it's the right colour or not. If anyone ever asks me, I'll say it had an engine swap somewhere in the field. With the amount of red and black on show in this kit, I thought this may be a bit different. You know, a certain je ne sais quoi. Obviously we're going to keep the air cleaner in the cream colour, but when we get to weathering, I think we can do some work with this and make it look really good. We're not building a pristine tank here, so we need to give it a look like it's been in service for a while. The air cleaners on the back of the vehicle will be sort of exposed to the elements through the grills. I want to give it a go with weathering. I want to just rust them up a bit and make it look like they've been stuck in the elements. I'm going to use the old trick of using some foam. I'm going to dip the foam piece into the actual paint itself and then rub most of it off onto the kitchen towel. And gently go over the part with the different colours, trying to get the sort of rusted effect, concentrating mostly on the corners. I'm by no means a weathering expert, but it is something I need to get better at to step up my game. I'm going to gently go over it with the different colours, one after another, building them all up. Once the model's all built up, we probably won't see a lot of this, but we'll definitely see the uh, air cleaner on top. Still planning to have it in like an exploded view so we can see the interior and all the exterior parts.
The rust effect hasn't come out too bad. Put it on the engine, it looks pretty, well, subtle. It looks well worn anyway. Better than my first attempt. That's all for this episode, and I'll see you next time for part four.